Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here to show you amazing open houses we're hosting this weekend. Let's take a look. I've been working in Metro real estate for 20 years and with my team in Prairie Trail, we've been helping families find their perfect home in my hometown, Ankeny. We can't wait to see you this weekend at our open houses. Talk with you soon. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, broths, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. What if you could create memories that would last a lifetime? That would be pretty cool. Well, now you can. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Ankeny Activities Network. Built by the Danielle Seifert Real Estate Team. Andy Pollock here tonight with the coach Chris Morrow and coach tonight as we get set to go. Ankeny uh, girls game first. We've got a doubleheader tonight. Ankeny will take on Urbandale first. And Urbandale has been going through some growing pains right now with their new head coach. And as we get set to go here tonight, uh, let's first of all talk about the Hawks. They've they've been rolling, including a big game that you saw here Tuesday night. Hawks were able to knock off then number five Valley, and they really had all cylinders clicking. Yeah, I mean, they're just playing really well defense, um, playing really good on offense, taking care of the basketball, and scoring uh, at big opportunities. And they're just playing really good. And like you said, a big win coming out of Christmas break against one of the top-ranked teams, Valley. So just really impressed with how they're playing right now, and uh, we'll see if they can continue this Friday night. One thing you noticed right away as we saw the Hawks come out to warm up is Jay Williams, their star guard, a sophomore, uh, not dressed tonight. What, in a game of this caliber, this magnitude, what could that mean? I mean, the Hawks are cruising along really good. We don't know of any injuries. We don't know what's wrong. Looks like she's been moving just fine with everybody else, but certainly someone you'd like to see in the lineup. Yeah, it's she's the go-getter of the team. She's the one that plays really tough defense, lots of energy. I'm not sure if, I know she rolled it a little bit on Tuesday night, or if she's it, uh, maybe a little bit sick. Um, but definitely there's a long season ahead, and so maybe they're just giving her a rest against a team that has been struggling. So um, it might be good for other girls to step up, um, and we'll see how they react with her off the floor. A good opportunity tonight. Urbandale coming in at 2-8 and eight on the season, and their games themselves just – you know, as we talked about it, we can't really sugarcoat it. They haven't been close. So uh, we'll see how things develop here tonight. But Urbandale, you know, throughout the course of the year, they've got a newer head coach, uh, just named a head coach in, what, July, I believe. And, you know, it's tough to set up a program, especially in the Central Iowa Metro League. Yeah, it's just really tough for Urbandale. They've had a lot of coaches change over in the last four or five years. And then just a, a lot of girls that – haven't got the experience that these top teams in the CIML have gotten. And looking at just conference games only, they're giving up, they're getting beat by on an average of 44.7 points per game. So I'm hoping that after Christmas break, they kind of want to cut that down and compete a little bit more and just take care of the basketball. It is time now to head down for our starting lineups brought to you tonight by Cinerama Ankeny your first full service sign and graphics company. The next voice you'll hear is our public address announcer tonight and a voice you've heard quite a bit here on the Academy Activities Network and Centennial Digital, Cade Tomlinson.
Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to Dream Homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at daniellecypher.com. Let's talk soon. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. So when an athlete walks into Nick Karash Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. What if you could create memories that would last a lifetime? That would be pretty cool. Well, now you can. Welcome back to here. The Ankeny Activities Network, built by the Danielle Seifert Real Estate Team. Andy Pollock, Chris Morrow here with you tonight. The Urbandale Jayhawks here in town set to take on your Ankeny Hawkettes. Chris, as we get started here, what are going to be some keys early on for these teams? I mean, obviously you look at it, Ankeny uh, decided favor tonight. Uh, I think a big start would be a huge thing here for them. Uh, just find some rhythm without her. And then as far as Urban now is take care of the basketball, give themselves a chance on the offense, and just limit the shots that uh, Ankeny will get on their offensive side. The Hawkeyes out on the floor right away. They're ready to go. Savvy Gage, Ainsley Keene, Maddie Anselmay out there as well as Cassie Johnson. Uh, the Urbandale Jayhawks are out there with, let's see, they've got Bree Tiggis, Taylor Mulligan. Tiggis will jump. And in the jump, Tiggis doesn't go up at all. Keen is the one that goes up there to get it. And we're set to go. Gage with the basketball right now for the Hawkettes. Keen gonna let loose a three right away. No good. Rebound out of there to the Hawkettes. That is Ella shot. So right away, quick shot by the Hawkettes. No good. Tiggis with the ball down to the corner. She throws it down low. This is shot. Shot throws it out to Laura Salmon. Salmon in a little bit of trouble right now. Throws it to a cutting Tiggis. Tiggis up off the glass. No good. And the rebound out of there to the Hawkettes. Down to the corner. Keen once again. We saw a game of runs on Tuesday night with the Jayhawks, or excuse me, the Hawkettes. I'm going to be confused by that, I think, all night. Hawkettes and Jayhawks. We're in Iowa. Everything has to do with the Hawks at some point, right? Absolutely. Cassie Johnson for three in the corner. No good. She gets her own rebound. Gage, long three-pointer, no good. So I'm not sure that's what Coach Toby wants early on, is three long three-pointers. Still scoreless here, just over a minute into this contest. Urbandale now with the basketball again. Ava Watier. Tiggis up top. Hawkettes 
in some man-to-man -man defense tonight. We've seen them use a lot of zone this year. The first time, we, not first time, but don't often see them use a lot of man. And that Key. Position, that's it. All the way down another three-pointer. 0 for 4 from three-point land tonight. And a foul here on the rebound on the Jayhawks. On the offensive side for Urbandale, just something that they cannot do tonight is this unfirst turnovers. First foul there, whistled on Salmon. Tigus will have a seat on the bench. First team foul of the night as well. Hawkeyes, like we said, 0 for 4 from 3 early on. Ansel May back up top. Gage into the lane, the floater hits the shot. She'll have a chance to complete the three-point play. Yeah, that's what Ankeny has to really do all night is just attack the rim, get to the bucket, they get cut off, kick out for the three. Free throw is no good. Keen battling for the rebound. It's going to go out of bounds off of Urbandale. The Hawks will maintain possession. It's a big emphasis for Urbandale tonight is no second chance opportunities. Gage is their shot blocked by, let's see who got that. Well, it's not Salmon. Salmon's got the rebound right now. Salmon all the way down, up off the glass. No good, but she's fouled by Keene. We'll have a chance to shoot a free throw. Ankeny just forgot to stop the ball there. Let her drive 100 foot for the foul to get to the free throw line. Kind of a sloppy start early as Salmon hits that free throw. Substitution here for Urbandale is coming into the game is Reese DeVote. Our first hearts of Ankeny Animal Hospital. Substitution tonight is Tigus set to check in here again as well. So Urbandale with a couple early substitutions. Gage away with the rebound. Looked like she wanted to go to Anselme down the court, but probably a good idea to hold things up. Anselme with the basketball. Cassie Johnson for three, no good. The Hawkeyes woes from three-point land continue. Keen right there might have got away with a little bit of a walk, but the rebound cleared by shot. Down the other way, Salmon taken away. Kick back out, three-point shot of the way. Good for Maddie Stutler. Good start by Urbandale on offense. Keen back the other way. Still can't hit a three. Rebound battle for between DeVoe and Gage. And the alternating possession will keep it with the Hawkettes. A lot of threes early by Ankeny. I'd like to see them get to the rim a little bit more here early on, establish more of an offensive set. There's definitely something to be said for settling. Absolutely. Down in the corner, Hawkettes against this press. It's been so tough on Hawkettes opponents throughout the course of the year. Tigus. And she drives in on Jaden Moser, who has recently checked in the game. Moes are going to get whistled for her first foul. Urbandale back with the basketball underneath their own hoop. Up top, tipped away. Keane gets a hand on it. We've seen Ainsley Keane early throughout the course of this year be very disruptive. There's, you know, She's had nights where the scoring has come, but she's been so disruptive. Not necessarily things that show up in the stat book, but as a coach, stuff that you love to see. Yeah, she's just a very good player to have. And on Tuesday night, she made some big three-point shots on those runs to get them that win against a very good Valley team. Mosier comes away with a steal for the Hawkeyes. Gage looking to push it, but Urbanel's back quick. Gage lets loose a three, no good. Again, a lot of three-point shots early on for the Hawkeyes, for the, yeah, Hawkeyes. Man, I cannot keep that straight. You're going to struggle with that one all night. I probably will, too. Taken away once again. Moser, second steal in a row. Keen. 
Gage now on the baseline, back to Keene. Three-point shot on the way, and I mean, there, there's so much time on the shot clock. It's almost like they're, it's almost like they're panicking right now. Yeah, it just looks like they're just not organized on offense with one of their top players. Uh, it may take them a quarter, but I'm sure they'll settle in. Ties it up at four. We're over halfway through the first quarter. Shot. Loses their dribble, taken away momentarily. Back to Urbandale. Kyla Schottveld in the game right now as well for the Hawkettes. She's the one that had that most recent deflect. Down low they go, Tiggets up with a shot, good. Urbandale with the early lead. Good look there, wide open. Good pass for a wide open layup. Jax hands off to Keen. Up top, Gage. Another three point shot on the way. Still can't hit one. And on the rebound foul, going to be whistled on Carson Jax. I'm not sure how many threes I should be taking tally, but I'm guessing that's about eight threes that they've taken on the offensive side in this first quarter. They've really struggled so far. Salmon gets rid of it. Mariah Dixon, a freshman in the game for Urbandale. She's got it right now. Dishes it off, tries to get it to Tigges, but good hustle coming back for the Hawkins. Anselme knocks the ball out of bounds. And it will stay with the Hawkins. 2.35 to go here in the first period. And Urbandale leads Ankeny 6-4. Kind of a surprise. Yeah, I haven't been able to say that very many times this year. Hopefully they can continue it on. Up with a shot down low, no good by Taylor Mulligan. Rebound kicked out of bounds. It will go back to the Hawkins. You look at this game right now, both teams are going really deep in their benches. Urbandale just looks a little bit more smooth on the offensive side right now than Ankeny. Really just kind of sense a last lack of focus on the part of the Hawkettes so far tonight. And a foul going to be whistled on the Jayhawks. It's going to be on Maya German. Jax loses the basketball. German takes it away and a foul. And we whistled on Jax. Can almost sense that frustration early on with the Hawkeyes, especially on the offensive end. Yeah, very good defense there by Mia German, a freshman for Urbandale. Urbandale's just making them, like you said, just not feeling like they're settling in right now. Urbandale back with the basketball. Taylor Mulligan to trigger. She gets it into German. German back to Mulligan. German the floater in the lane, no good. Fights for her own rebound, gets it back. Puts it up and good. Mia German that, knocks it in. That's actually a, uh, Mariah Dixon. She's oh, a Dixon freshman. There. Sorry, yes. Couple freshmen out there, Dixon and German. They try to go down low, taken away. Urbandale has Ankeny doubled up here towards the end of the first quarter. Minute and a half to go. Urbandale eight, Hawkeyes four. Tigges tries to deliver down low to Salmon, tipped away. Scrum on the floor, and the ball's going to go out of bounds and back to the Hawkeyes. What a start by the Jayhawks. Yeah, certainly no lack of fight in what they put up, especially on the defensive end. Gage, gonna try to get some offense rolling for the Hawkettes. Kicks it out, three-point shot on the way. Ansel made no good, but on the rebound, Taylor Mulligan absolutely cleared out Gage. 
Definitely playing inspired basketball, but maybe a little too inspired on that play. Yeah, I can't fault her for that. They're playing physical, and that's kind of what Urban Hill has to do this game is just be more physical and more intensity and keep bringing the juice that they're bringing. So Gage will have an opportunity to shoot two with our new free throw rules this year. There's no more one-on-one. -on -one. They say no. That was only the fourth. So the Hawkettes will have the ball underneath their own basket. Lobs it in and taken away. Good steal bear there. Ava Watier all the way down for a layup. Up and good. Shot with the rebound. Urbandale playing inspired right now. Coach Toby wants a timeout and talk things over. And, you know, we talk about just kind of a lack of focus right now on the part of the Hawkettes. Really no flow whatsoever on the offensive end. Yeah, and you just wouldn't think that one player being out would make this big of a difference. And like you said, Urban Dose is coming out with lots of juice, lots of intensity. I see lots of smiles on their team. Uh, they haven't had this feeling, and it, I'm sure it feels good for them. So they want to continue it on and make a big run. Urbandale trying to pull the upset tonight over the number eight ranked Ankeny Hawks, and they've had a hot start leading 10 to four. Some buckets in transition on the offensive end have certainly helped them out, but really it started on the defensive end. They have made life very difficult on the Hawkettes. Yeah, they're just limiting their drives and really just crashing in and squeezing the middle of the lane and making them take outside shots that they're not hitting right now. Keen with the basketball right now, ball tipped away. Gage, lobs one up there and in. That's exactly what they needed, a big shot by the future Division I basketball player, Savannah Gage. Gives them an opportunity to set up their press. Stutler gets it ahead to shot. Gives it off the knee of, I believe that was Ansel May. And out of bounds, we'll go to Urbandale. I'd like to see Ankeny really step up the pressure here and make Urbandale just feel uncomfortable as that's what the Jayhawks have been doing to the Hawkettes. It's a really tough spot for Urbandale to take the ball out of bounds down there in the corner. Kind of stuck, a natural trap. They do get it into Salmon. Salmon loses the basketball, goes up with the left hand, no good. Battle for the rebound. And out of bounds off of Urbandale, back to the Hawkettes. See if Ankeny can make a run here. Get a bucket with 20 seconds left in two point game. and. Settle back in for the second quarter. Gage. Corner Ansel May. Back out, they swing it around to Gage for three and they still can't get a three point shot to fall. Tiggis tracks it down, tracks it down. Three point shot at the horn, just off. There, that was frighteningly close by Ava Watier. Great first quarter by the Jayhawks. We'll be back right after this. This is the Ankeny Activities Network, driven, excuse me, powered by the Danielle Seifert Real Estate Team. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here to show you amazing open houses we're hosting this weekend. Let's take a look. I've been working in Metro Real Estate for 20 years, and with my team in Prairie Trail, we've been helping families find their perfect home in my hometown, Ankeny. We can't wait to see you this weekend at our open houses. Talk with you soon. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. Welcome back to the Ankeny Activities Network. Built by the Danielle Seifert Real Estate Team, where tonight... Urbandale upset-minded right now as they lead the Hawkettes 10-6 at the end of the first quarter. 
Carson Jacks, who's been quiet tonight, hands it off to Keene. She's got it back. Urbandale's man-to-man -man defense has really caused the Hawkettes issues. Now Jax gets a three-point look, and the Hawkettes still 0 for the night from 19 feet 6 inches away. They cannot get one to fall from the three-point line, and then shooting 0% is not good for them right now from the three-point line. Gage tripped up on the rebound. Making sure she gets back up. She is fresh off a left ACL repair. About five or six games into her 2023-24 season. She is definitely, without knowing the extent of whatever is wrong with Williams, Gage becomes a very important player. She's got the ball right now. Baseline move up with the shot through some contact. Rebound, no good. Urbandale with the ball again and a travel. Watier picked it up just a little bit early. Didn't have anything to do with it. And that's just something that they cannot have tonight is just unforced turnovers. They got their possession, slow down and take care of the basketball and get a good look. So the Hawkettes have spent a lot of time on offense, but haven't had the points to show for it. Jax. Urbandale's doing a really good job of not letting them get to the paint, making them drive and kick on everything. Keen three-point shot on the way. Still can't hit. That one's even further off than the other ones. I and think the Hawkettes right now, are ice cold. I think right now, Andy, is... They're wanting to get the half to hopefully get to the other side and try out the other hoop because right now they're just not even close. Certainly feels like it's in their head right now because you can see even a little bit more hesitation on running their offense. Urbandale back on the attack, taken away. Maybe they can create some opportunities on defense. Jax is fouled. So you won't get that run out opportunity. Yeah, I was going to say that's exactly what they need is a layup, see the ball go through the hoop. That's what these Hawkettes need to see is the ball go through the hoop. And right now they haven't seen that. Coach, you've been around the game of basketball for a long time. When that block is happening and you just can't hit anything, I've always been of the opinion that you just keep shooting. As a coach, you tell your girls to keep shooting, but... So far, it sure looks like it's been in the heads of the Hawkeye players right now that they have not been able to hit a shot. Yeah, as a coach, you really don't want to tell somebody, especially a girl, is don't shoot the ball. But what's happening right now is they're not shooting in rhythm. They're thinking about it. They haven't seen it go through, so they're double clutching, or they got a little hitch in their shot. So right now, you got to tell them to keep shooting. But I would tell them, get to the paint, get to the hole, try to get a foul get to the free throw line and see the ball go through the hoop. Well, and you saw nearly an opportunity to create some stuff on the defensive end and allow them to maybe break off the schneid here, but actually a pretty good foul by Urbandale. They lob it into Keene. Urbandale out of the timeout, switches to a 2-3 zone. They've been really good in man. Jack's in there for the rebound. Can't get it to fall. Second opportunity, she gets it to go in and Carson Jacks one of the shortest players on the floor, but we've seen her do a lot of damage on the offensive glass this year. Urbandale back down to the half court set. They still lead 10 to eight. What's here? Up top, Mulligan swings it around over the shot. Down low they go, Mulligan back out, three point shot on the way, good. Ellis shot. And then you have the other end for the Jayhawks. They're seeing the ball go through, so they're playing with confidence. Confidence is sky high tonight for the Jayhawks. Urbandale swings it around. Shotveld gets it down in the corner. Gage up with a shot. Good. Savvy Gage, you feel like, is going to have to be the one that turns things on for the Hawkettes tonight. And before an inbounds, what is going on? It should not have happened. The ball was already passed in. 
Another 30 second timeout for the Hawkettes. So they gave it to him a little bit later. Medell already had the ball in bounds. But we will play through it. And again, not much flow to this game. And you feel like, you know, as a coach that's been a part of some upsets and a coach that's gone in the game as favorites, man, the uglier it gets, the better you feel for the team trying to pull the upset. Yeah, I mean, Urbandale is just giving themselves a chance. They're getting good, good shots off. Uh, they're moving without the basketball. And then on the defensive end, they're just making everything hard for the Ankeny, I almost messed it up, Hawkeyes, um, to make them take outside shots that they're not hitting. Jayhawks, the long lob in. They've done a good job handling the press. In fact, considerably better than a lot of teams against the Hawkeyes. Salmon drives it all the way down, steps through, up off the glass and in. Great patience there, good step through by Solomon. Up five. Jax picks up her dribble a little bit early. Gage goes up top to Shotville. Back to Jax. Long three for Gage, good! That's the shot the Hawkettes needed. The cover is finally off the basketball hoop for the Hawkettes. Urbandale still in the lead, 15-13. They break the press in the middle of the mulligan. Hands off to Stutler, and on the layup, Stutler's fouled. We'll have a chance to shoot two. Yeah, They've Andy, really handled that nicely. You're, yeah, you're, you hit it right on the nose. They're really doing a really good job of breaking the press, and they're giving themselves the opportunity for layups. I'm not so much sure how much longer Ankeny wants to stay in that. Stutler rims out with the first free throw. It's the first game of a double header here tonight. Boys game will come after this. Stutler gives the Jayhawks a three point lead. Jax for the Hawkettes. She's another player you keep waiting to uncork one. Keen, all the way in Keen, up block from behind. Stutler got a piece of it. Jayhawks on the run out. All the way in, Salmon. She kicks it out into a little secondary break. Ball tipped away momentarily. Jayhawks with the basketball back. Salmon again with the ball up top. Salmon battles through, up off the glass, no good. The future Texas Tech softball player, Cassie Johnson with the rebound. Certainly an up and down game, a lot of tempo. Down low they go, Johnson draws a crowd. Back up top. Shotville, three point shot on the way, no good. Long rebound out there, cleared by Mulligan. And a foul on the Hawkettes. Just some really, I call it sloppy basketball right now. Hopefully we see a, a better second half, but this is exactly the, what Everdale wants right now, and it's they're getting really good looks at the hoop every possession. There, like you mentioned before, the Hawkettes have pulled off of the press. Urbandale has had no issues with that tonight at all. In fact, they've felt pretty good about the way they've handled it. Ball tipped away there momentarily as Watier comes back to recover it. Tigges, multi-sport athlete, up off the glass and can't get it to fall. Rims out, rebound out of there to Keene. Long throw down, Anselme goes up with a shot block from behind. It'd be interesting if we had a shot chart right now to see the shots from the Jayhawks to the Hawkettes, and you're getting everything you want from the Jayhawks inside. Mariah Dixon, the freshman, checks in for Urbandale. With her heart of Ankeny Animal Hospital substitution, Gage into the lane. Back out it goes. Down to the corner, Gage, that's a good look for three, yes. And that's a big difference right there. She caught the ball in rhythm, looked good, release was smooth. And that's what they need if they're gonna hit those shots. And I know you're like-minded with me, that rhythm shot, you can't create a better situation. Back the other way, defense, creating some offense for Carson Jacks. 
So right now the Jayhawks have played a great first half. They cannot start playing sloppy basketball these last two minutes. As you big, see a little momentum for Ankeny. Big collision at center court between Ainsley Keene and Taylor Mulligan. And Keene quickly helps her up, obviously. Nothing egregious meant by that. Just going for hard for the steal. Couple more substitutions. Jayhawks take another timeout. I'm not sure we've seen this many first half timeouts in any game that we've seen so far this year. Yeah, I guess when it's your teams aren't playing very good, you gotta try something to get them ovated for Ankeny. I'm, did Ankeny call that timeout? I think Urbandale called that timeout. And I'm sure he's saying to them right now, just like I said, is we've played really good. Let's control the basketball these last two minutes and going to half, feeling pretty darn good. Urbandale's even had some opportunities underneath the basket that they haven't been able to capitalize on and they certainly could look at this and say they've left some points on the board, off the board I should say in this first half. They definitely have, but you gotta be proud of how they've gotten to the hoop and the confidence that they're playing with. Urbandale trying to pull the upset tonight. The Hawkettes have other things in mind. Mulligan triggers it into Tigges. Three point shot on the way from the corner, no good from DeVote. And the Hawkettes, if there's one thing you can look at tonight that they've been really good about, that's clearing the defensive boards. Another missed three pointer. Stutler nearly lost it. Back out to Mulligan. Stutler again with the basketball. Oh, nice quick move, but Tigges wasn't ready for it. She was open. Yeah, great call play there, right there. Just the roll and she wasn't ready for the ball. Under a minute and a half to go in the first half and not exactly how we thought it would be going. Hawkett's out of rhythm offensively tonight to say the least. Long throw over there, Schottville. Back to Anselme, Jax. There's a good spot for Gage. Quick recovery, steps through. What a left hand move, couldn't get it to fall. Rebound comes out of there, Taylor Mulligan. Now Stutler. Down low they go, and a foul gonna be whistled on Jade Moser. Good job by Tiggis right there, establishing her position and posting up strong. Urbandale the trigger, will they go two for one? Here at the end of the half, they go down low, Tigges throws up a shot, can't get it to fall, ball's tipped out of bounds, and it will stay with the Jayhawks. Savvy Gage leads all scorers tonight. She's got 14 for the Hawkettes. Oh, quick move in, great look. Off the inbounds play, Ella Shot gets it to fall. And with that, Urbandale will have the opportunity to take the last shot in this first half. Great inbounds play right there for the Jayhawks to give them an easy bucket. Shot mailed with the basketball. Anselme, long three point shot on the way, no good. Long rebound, Jax has the basketball. Down to the corner, Gage for three, good! He started to heat up a little bit, and that's something that you cannot do for the Jayhawks is give them multiple chances to score. Savvy Gage has had herself quite a first half. 17 points, Mosier, oh, I thought she had the charge. She's whistled for the foul. Took quite a hit on the floor now. That might have been a makeup call. I don't know. They missed maybe a reach out up front. Looked to me, she was pretty set. Moser appears to be a little shaken up. She grabbed her head right away. I didn't see exactly what hit the floor, but she's pointed to the trainer right away. Certainly not what the Hawkettes need is somebody else to go down tonight. 1.9 seconds to go. 
here in the first half. Hawk gets 21, Urbandale 18. And that'll be two free throws as well here for Taylor Mulligan. Don't forget to stick around, our halftime show. Josh Cowart, New York Life Agency here in Des Moines. Great sponsor of ours here on the Yankee Activities Network. Mulligan, second free throw is good. Has it within two, 1.9 seconds to go. Gage, the way she's been shooting, maybe we wanted her to shoot another shot. That's gonna do it, the end of the first half. Ankeny leads Urbandale 21 to 19. We'll be back with our New York Life Halftime Show right after this on the Ankeny Activities Network, built by the Danielle Seifert Real Estate Team. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here to show you amazing open houses we're hosting this weekend. Let's take a look. I've been working in Metro Real Estate for 20 years, and with my team in Prairie Trail, we've been helping families find their perfect home in my hometown, Ankeny. We can't wait to see you this weekend at our open houses. Talk with you soon. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching, we have the best technology, we have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. What if you could create memories that would last a lifetime? That would be pretty cool. Well, now you can. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to dream homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at daniellecipher.com. Let's talk soon.
West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. Welcome back to Halftime here on the Ankeny Activities Network. Built by the Danielle Seifert Real Estate Team. This is our Halftime Show brought to you by the Josh Coward Offices of New York Life here in Ankeny in the district. A great opportunity to stop by there and get your life insurance needs, college planning, financial planning, all evaluated. Josh does a great job over there in a beautiful setting, beautiful office over there in the district. I guess I haven't driven by today to see if the tree is still up, the Christmas tree, but that was a beautiful setting all throughout the holiday season. Uh, Chris Morrow, as we evaluate this first half, 21 to 19, Ankeny Hawkettes leading Urbandale in a half that we certainly didn't see it go the way we expected it to go, but you know, there's certainly plenty of things that both teams can improve on. Yeah, if we look at the Jayhawks, that's one of their best halves all year. And they left a lot of points still on the board with missed layups, but they're getting the good looks. And then we switch over to Ankeny, and the big talk now is Jayla Williams is not playing. They're not used to her not being on the court, and you can see it. They're not in rhythm. They're not sure what to do. But you also look at the intensity and the energy level, and then it's just like blah. So you got through the first half, you're still up, and I'm sure that's what Coach Toby is saying is we got to come out with energy now and we got to step on the gas like we're playing any other team any other night in the CIML. Certainly the Hawkeyes campaign favored by a considerable amount be the eighth-ranked team in the state. Urbandale, I mean, quite frankly, has not been able to play close with a lot of the CIML teams, but it shows you, I mean, you mentioned it, that Urbandale is – they're not a horrible team. <laughs> they, they, they're right here with it. And I mean, you certainly can't say Irmandale's played their best basketball either. No, and they're just playing really inspired. And that's what you see. Like I said earlier, you look on their bench, the girls are clapping, they're smiling, they're having fun. But when things are going better than what you're used to, that's what happens. And, and they gotta just continue with the momentum and keep that juice going the second half to give them a chance. We'll take another quick break. This has been the Halftime Show brought to you by the New York Life Offices of Josh Coward. About three minutes left in halftime, and we'll be back with the second half right after this. This is the Ankeny Activities Network, built by the Danielle Seifert Real Estate Team. Hi, everybody. Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to dream homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at DanielleSeifert.com. Let's talk soon. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level.
What if you could create memories that would last a lifetime? That would be pretty cool. Well, now you can. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to Dream Homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at daniellecypher.com. Let's talk soon. Set to go in the second half here shortly. Andy Pollock, Chris Morrow with you here tonight on the Ankeny Activities Network. And Chris, a really nice crowd has started to make their way into the gym here on the south side of Ankeny. Yeah, that's one thing about Urbanville is they always support their athletes. And then Ankeny's always supported their players too. So I'm sure we may see a full house for the boys game as they're starting to come in. I didn't look ahead of time. I believe it's Crocker Elementary Night, and that's one of the fun things they do at the Ankeny High School is recognize one of their elementaries each night and certainly brings in a lot of extra kids and kind of fun when you know your friends are going to be at the game to know to show up, but always a little extra buzz with all the elementary kids. The Ankeny school system is set up, so uh, kindergarten through fifth grade is in the elementaries, which are very neighborhood-centric. And you've got the middle school, the first middle school is at 6-7, and then the next middle school is at 8-9, and then 10 through 12 in each of the high schools, and that will be changing in the next couple of years. They're gonna go 9-12 in high school as Tigges goes in, pushes it up off the glass. Tigges, a player that I've watched for years. She's been a very talented shortstop as well for the Urbandale Jayhawk softball team. Multi-sport athlete going to try to get Urbandale tied up with this game right now. She'll head to the line to shoot two. Cassie Johnson picks up her second foul for the Hawkettes. Tigges rolls that free throw in. Tigas can't get that one to fall. Johnson rips the rebound down. She pushes it ahead. Keen running the floor. Oh, just miss Gage underneath. Gage goes baseline. Johnson for three. No good. High up to get the rebound. Carson Jacks. And that should be four, but she's done so much damage on the offensive glass to other teams this year. Yeah, and that just cannot happen for the Jayhawks to give those opportunities for them to score. And a travel to the Jayhawks coming down the other way. So fast start here for the Hawkettes in the second half. That's a big no-no too is pick up your dribble right over the half court line. You really can't do anything with it at that point. Jacks with the basketball for the Hawkettes. Gage all the way in. She had 17 points in the first half. Thought about three, now takes it good. Savvy Gage, She's feeling it tonight. She's really feeling it tonight, keeping her team in this game with 20 points of the 26. And a turnover for Urbandale. Sends it back over to the Hawkettes. You can start to sense a little buzz amongst the crowd here now too. Yeah, and you can kind of sense the juice going back over to Ankeny. Coach Birdwell, the assistant coach for Ankeny, is telling their bench, we got to get in this game right now. They try to get it in there to Keene. Taken out of there by Tigges. Whips it ahead to Scott. And Keene gets it, throws it off of shot. Out of bounds, Hawkettes will get the basketball back. Mm -hmm. 
Jayhawks really got to do a really good job on defense here is not giving up a big run. Jacks behind the back. All the way in, up off the glass. Good, she's going to chance for the three-point play. Timeout. This is going to be a full timeout for the Jayhawks. We'll take one as well and be back right after this. The Yankee Activities Network, built by the Danielle Seifert real estate team. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here to show you amazing open houses we're hosting this weekend. Let's take a look. I've been working in Metro Real Estate for 20 years and with my team in Prairie Trail, we've been helping families find their perfect home in my hometown, Ankeny. We can't wait to see you this weekend at our open houses. Talk with you soon. second half they lead 28 to 20 they have outscored Urbandale 8 to 2 I believe is what it's been here in the third, third quarter yeah and Ankeny's just doing a much better job of playing with more rhythm playing together more on the offensive end and getting to the rim they just really needed to settle down you just kind of sensed a little lackadaisical start for the Hawkettes as that free throw is hit Jacks with nine now on the night. There's never a question of how the Hawkettes are playing defense. They just were completely out of sync on the offensive end. Tigas gets it down low to Salmon. Salmon up with a shot high off the glass and oh, after a lot of bounces, couldn't quite get it to fall. Yeah, it, it bounced around there for a little while, but that's one thing that you have to go up strong through the contact and use that backboard to get that in one. Salmon misses that one. Five fifty four to go. In the third quarter. Rebound away, Gage clears it. Drives all the way in, no one picks her up, off the glass, can't get it to fall. Rebound out of there, the shot. He's doing a really good job of that hesitation dribble. Urbanel's coach is yelling carry, but it's really just a hesitation move. And Tigas goes down low, the old school drop step. Puts it up off the glass and in. Johnson has the ball taken away. Salmon nearly loses her dribble. Three point shot on the way, shot no good. One of those that it's open but not in that rhythm that we talked about earlier. Yeah, it was just a catch and shot right away and just no rhythm like you said and just a rush shot right there. Hawkins with a seven point lead. Five minutes to go in the third. Jax. We've seen her just late in games this year, just take stuff over. And Johnson gets whistled for her third away from the basketball, setting a screen. Well, Andy, I, I got a stat for you. All if right. I told you this stat, would you believe it? Last time the Jayhawks have had a conference win was the 2019-20 season as they finished 15 and eight overall record and they made the state tournament that year. Couple things about that. First of all, you've seen several coaching changes throughout that and it's really tough in this conference with the coaches that have been around for as long as so many coaches have been to build something, but 
That is a testament to the CIML Central Conference. What was the Central Conference now is the CIML that Urbandale has been a part of. When you're talking about going against the likes of Ankeny, Ankeny Centennial, Waukee, Waukee Northwest. Oh, yeah, Johnson's working on who knows how many state titles right now. They're ranked number one this year. Just so many talented basketball teams. Valley, Dowling, it's so many. Southeast Pole, who's down this year, but has had some great years leading up to this. Tiggis muscles it up there over Mosier. Gets her own rebound, can't put it in. Gage goes up high to get the rebound, and then she's tied up by Salmon. Four twenty-one to go in the third period. Just have not really sensed a flow at all to this game tonight. I was just going to tell you, this game is kind of taking me out of my flow up here. So I think we all need to just get back in the flow the rest of this game. Still, yeah, I just don't feel like we've been able to go more than 35, 45 seconds without a whistle for something. Mosier open underneath, she puts it in. Delay of game warning there. After you score the basketball, you can't touch the ball after you score it. I didn't see, was it Moser who touched it after it went through? Okay. Yep. First warning for the Hawkeyes. But Moser has them out to a nine point lead. Urbandale, the points have been tough to come by here in this third quarter. We haven't seen much of the freshmen here in this second half. As Salmon throws it up, no good. Hawkeyes looking to run. Mulligan back there, knocks away, looks like a D-back, and then right there is Gage. Opportunity for a three-point play. Yeah, and that 50-50 ball you have to have for the Jayhawks. She kind of thought about going after it or not. Go get that ball, it's a 50-50 ball, a value that possession for your offense. When you're trying to complete an upset, you can't play tentative, right? No, you, you can't. Hawkeyes looking to run again, Keen for the layup. Now the Hawkeyes are starting to find their groove. This is the Hawkeyes team that we see and they're just Weren't comfortable with Jayla on the bench, and now they're there, and they're playing with energy. Urbandale has one timeout remaining after this one. We'll take a break and be back right after this. This is the Ankeny Activities Network, built by the Danielle Seifert Real Estate Team. So when an athlete walks into Nick Tarash Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. Back here in the third quarter, 3.09 to go. Andy Powell, Chris Morrow with you here tonight from the south side of Ankeny. We'll find ourselves here quite a bit over the course of the early part of 2024. It felt like the schedule was really backloaded. We were only here once for basketball and once for wrestling before Christmas, but now after Christmas we'll get our opportunity to talk to Acting Athletic Director Mike Baker quite a bit. Keep in tune very much with Hawk and Hawkett Athletics. Urbandale out of the timeout. See what sort of adjustments they make. A lot of times out of a timeout, you'll see a set play. And Urbandale backfires on them. Tegas powers her way in and she travels with the basketball. She was expecting a lot of contact and didn't get it. Yeah, she kind of lowered her shoulder. She could have got an offensive foul, but she. Shuffled her feet a little bit too much and 
You know, Ankeny's just playing with a lot of energy now. Keith. Little. Little zone defense here by Urbandale. Just a quick moment for the Hawkheads to recognize the floater up the edge. Gage can't get it to fall through. I mentioned it to you off the air coming out at halftime. We both kind of agreed, but you wonder what that halftime locker room talk might have sounded like with Coach Toby, because the Hawkheads certainly were not playing up to their potential. Coach Toby, and I'm sure maybe Jayla Williams had a little bit of a talk to say to her teammates of just being a good leader there in halftime and telling her girls to get back focused. One thing that's different for the Jayhawks the second half is this, this too many turnovers with the basketball. Mosher with the basketball up top. Coach Toby wanting some motion, getting somebody to move down low. Mosier flash to it, nothing there. Urbandale on the run out. All the way up with the layup, good for Reese DeVoe. And he's swinging around. Ooh, that was a good look down there. Jax is still open. She can play that post spot. Great ball move by the Hawkettes. One extra pass, probably not needed. They had a couple open looks that they passed up. Harlem Globetrotters are in town Sunday. <laughs> I'll be there. And that seemed to be what the Hawkettes were going for there. Down the lane, the runner, no good. Good cut there by DeVoot from the weak side. Found the open middle, just couldn't finish. Jax, I say she's been quiet. She's still got nine points, so we've seen her get some offensive boards. Shot veiled with it right now. Keen. Gage, who's been on fire, hits another three pointer. Gage has got 25 points. I'm not sure, but Urbano is just not finding her and leaving her wide open. It sure seems like it's not been exactly in transition, but more of that secondary look where she seems to get lost on the offensive end. Urbandale can't find her. She's found herself with some great looks. Hawkett's cruising now. They lead by 14. 10 seconds on the game clock. Shot clock is off. Fine, savvy Gage. Jax hands it off to Keen. Might have got away with the travel. Jax for three is fouled. She'll have three free throws as the horn goes off. Yeah, right there, big emphasis. You have to give the shooter the ability to land after a shot, and she just didn't allow her to land. The officials come together to discuss to make sure that it was indeed before the horn went off. Jax has walked over to the bench, but it was certainly before the horn went off. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're discussing. They may be discussing if it was after the shot, but that's not true because it, it was a foul because she took the shot. There's no video review as the officials have gone over to discuss with the clock operator. Or maybe it's if they're gonna put some time back on the clock. Point two seconds going back on the clock. Andy, I'm not sure why they would because you can't do anything with point two seconds, but I'm guessing they're... You can get a Hawkett tip. <laughs> That's what you can get. So if... Jax would happen to miss one of her free throws. She could get a, someone could get a tip. That'd be the only opportunity. But the Hawkettes don't even have anybody in the lane. So Jax will have three free throws. 
with .2 seconds to go. It has been an outstanding third quarter for the Hawkettes. Much of what we were expecting to see tonight from Coach Toby's squad. Yeah, big free throws here to go up. Big for the J. I messed it up there. The Hawkettes. Jax is a really good free throw shooter, but you're starting to find out why up here in the media box, we don't talk about free throw percentages. <laughs> <'cause it's, laughs> the jinx is real. Jax hits her third, gets two out of three, extends the lead to 16. And the shot at the horn is no good, actually very close, but it would have been after the horn anyway. The Hawkeyes with a huge third quarter. They lead 30 to 20, 40 to 24. We'll be back right after this on the Ankeny Activities Network, built by the Danielle Seifert Real Estate Team. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to Dream Homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at DanielleSeifert.com. Let's talk soon. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. Oh, Chris Morrow seeing those commercials for West 40 Market. Makes me long for grilling season once again. In fact, I did have the grill lit up just this last week with some from West 40. Got my breakfast food on Christmas from them as well. Just longing for that warm weather. I don't stop grilling for anything, but I just prefer to have warm weather, an ice cold beverage, and some country music on the radio while I'm grilling. You know, it would be uh, crazy to tell you I had brats before I came, but it did not taste the same as coming off the grill from a skillet. Yeah, that's uh, one of my favorite things to do some of that meat from some of our local lockers, local farmers, you know, right where it's come from. It's been outstanding to have such a gem of a business like West 40 Market right here in Uptown Ankeny for us. Salmon drives into the lane, shoots it up, and shoots it out. Ankeny crowd not happy with that, and quite honestly, I'm not sure I blame them. Yeah, it looked like she was doing exactly what she was supposed to is straight up, but he's saying she came down, and, and that's frustrating because as a coach, you see her going straight up. You don't know what to tell her what she did wrong. Salmon's free throw is good. Salmon with her fourth point of the night. A junior, been seeing her play for quite a while. Ankeny as well, she hits her second. Cats back on the attack. They've handled the different defenses from Urbandale very well, especially in the third quarter. Keen drives into the land of the Giants. She's knocked down hard. Shot belt for three, no good. Rebound out of there. Salmon running the floor. Steps through, up with a shot, no good. She'll have a chance to shoot two more. Good start for the Jayhawks in this fourth quarter. Two times of getting to the line for free throws. First free throw hard off the back iron. Looking ahead uh, next week, we've got a lot of activities we'll have here on the Ankeny Activities Network and we'll have an opportunity to watch and keep up with a lot of Ankeny sports Tuesday night's a big night. Uh, there will be a home basketball game that we'll have on here, as well as home wrestling that we'll have on here. So I'll be bouncing back and forth. Home wrestling will be hosted over at Southview Middle School. Basketball will be here against Joaquin. And then Thursday night, there is basketball here against Joaquin. We'll also be up at Centennial as the Hawks wrestling team takes on Centennial. 
And then on Friday, there is girls wrestling tournament here at Ankeny. And on Saturday is a boys wrestling tournament here at Ankeny. So it's gonna be a very busy week of activities here on the Ankeny Activities Network. Oh, nice move by Jax. A lot of air time there. Yeah, they used the whole shot clock, was patient. Attack downhill, got a layup. But Andy, I'm more impressed by you knew that whole schedule without looking at anything. Well, I've been looking at next week for a long time. There are a <laughs> lot of activities that are gonna be packed up and unpacked. We're ready to go for next week. Salmon up with a shot, no good. Good cut there, just unfortunately couldn't able to finish. Great cooperation with the administration here at Ankeny. Administration at Centennial, those athletic departments work together so well. Uh, was up at North Polk last night covering wrestling for the Ankeny girls wrestling team, which is Ankeny, Centennial, North Polk, and they could not have been more gracious hosts than what they were last night as well. So just great to be around working with a lot of these athletic departments and seeing how they run things and some top notch operations around here. Keen into the lane, kicks it back out. Gage has seen a little face garden here by the Jayhawks. She ought to just continue moving. Gage gets run through. She's been on the ground a lot tonight. Takes a second to get back up. Clock stops with 5.47 to go in the fourth quarter. Hawkettes. Had a huge second half. They lead 42-26. Gage with the basketball. Might as well shoot it. She's had the hot hand tonight and then a foul. Whistled on Ella Shot. Yeah, so we saw this on Tuesday by Valley kind of boxing one in. Had a pause there. Yep, rips down the rebound on the run. Urbandale up with a shot, no good. Shot, couldn't get it to fall. Now Hawkett's on the run out. Gage. Ball movement, Johnson tries to get it down on the slide move. Down to Keen. Ball's tipped out of bounds, will remain with the Hawkett's. Back to kind of that lack of flow in the game right now that we had in the first half. Jax thought about three. Shot build. Excuse me, that's Ansel May. Three, four, and five. Well, two, three, four, and five. Keen hits a three. The Hawkettes regularly use out there on the floor number two, number three, number four, and number five. We've got to keep them all straight. That was deep. That was a deep three with nothing but net. Tickets. She works in, kicks out, baseline move, shot. Kicks it back out to Tigas. Salmon bullies her way in, spins up, and ball taken out of there by Jax. And she's whistled for the travel. Pulled it away off the steal, hit the ground. Some good defense there. She, she was on the backside. She felt her going to that smooth spin move, and she was right there for the jump ball. Oh, and shot turned right into her. A clean steal. It's just when you fall down to the ground, get whistled for that. Keen gets a steal off the inbounds. She pushes it ahead. Cross country runner for Ankeny looking to run. She thought about the step back three. They're about to invoke oh. the name of Caitlin Clark if she would have hit that one. Yeah, and then we got a drive there. Kind of awkward, she didn't even jump on her shot. I don't know if I've seen that before.
Russell May. Hawk gets by 20. This is the first game of our double here tonight. We'll have the Urbandale Jayhawks and the Ankeny Hawks. Boys game about 15 minutes after this first one. 30 second timeout, we'll take one as well. We'll be back right after this. This is the Ankeny Activities Network, built by the Danielle Seifert Real Estate Team. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. Welcome back to the South Side of Ankeny, Andy Powell, and Chris Morrow here tonight. We have the Centennial Jaguars are playing over at Southeast Polk tonight. They're going to flip things. They're going to play the boys' game first over there, girls' game second, and uh, that boys' game should be a good one. Southeast Polk plays over in Cedar Rapids tomorrow right away in the morning, so they wanted to let them play that game and get on the road yet tonight. I was just going to ask what was the reason for that, but makes sense. I made a call right away as soon as I saw the schedule. If there's a story, I want to know about it. So we're ready to go there, but no. Southeast Folk over at, uh, I didn't see which Cedar Rapids school tomorrow, but they play them right away in the morning. So that boys game probably about done by now. We've got a boys game here next. Urbandale, Ankeny, three-point shot on the way, no good, rebound, good clear out by Jack. She's such a good rebounder. Gage with the basketball. Gage again. Off the screen, kicks out, Jacks for three. No good. They have not been great from three-point land tonight. Gage has been great from three-point land, but as a team, it's been a struggle. Salmon can't get that one to fall. Has another opportunity. She drives in the lane, up with a shot off the glass. No good. Ball tipped out of bounds. Thought it went off Salmon's shoulder, but it's going to stay with the Jayhawks. Salmon's playing just really aggressive on the offensive end. She's kind of just lowering that shoulder and bulldogging her way to the hoop. And we'll have a couple free throws for the Jayhawks. It'll be Reese DeVoe. We've got a middle school boy twerking for Devote to distract her from free throws. It worked, I guess. It worked. It did. He's back set up to do it again. Devote pushes aside the distraction. Urban Ale takes a full timeout. We'll be right back. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to dream homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at daniellecypher.com. Let's talk soon. 
nine to go in the fourth quarter. It is the Ankeny Hawkettes by 20. They've had a great second half. Urbandale has scored less than 20 points. Bodies all over the floor, nothing called. Urbandale comes away with a steal. Mariah Dixon, they try to go down low. Gage had fallen down into there, and she comes away with a steal. As she had dropped down from the top of that zone defense. Foul going to be whistled on Taylor Mulligan. That is the fourth team foul. One more before the Hawkettes will be shooting two. Urbandale has not backed off their press here in the second half. Nice job handling it. They get the layup. Great execution there. Not much for Dixon to do when it's three on one. Shotville drops it in. Up top, Dixon taken away. that steal. Johnson, you know, Cassie Johnson is an athlete that a lot of games this year we talk a lot about, but been pretty quiet tonight. No points, four fouls, so she's been settled in foul trouble there. Turnover is Keen tried to kick it out to Ansel May. There we've got a bunch of hearts of Ankeny Animal Hospital substitutions. Into the game for the Hawkettes is Libby Loftus. And for the Jayhawks, we've still got Mulligan, Reese DeVote. Salmon still in the game. Ava Watier. And Maddie Sutler. Ball tipped away momentarily. Three-point shot on the way, no good. Good box out, good battle down low. Johnson gets the rebound. Boys are starting to work their way out on the floor. 80 seconds left in this one. Hawkett's in no rush right now, leading by 22. We've got about a 15 minute break between games. We'll be back on the air for the boys game tonight. Sure to be an entertaining one. Coach Carlson has the uh, Hawks boys playing very strong so far this year. Quick timeout for the Hawkettes to get some subs in the game. For their Heart of Ankeny Animal Hospital substitutions, Grace Buck, Malia Cobb in the game, Loft is staying in the game, Allison Hawkins, and Hannah Howard in the game as well for the Hawkeyes. Hawkins up against the pressure, shot clock goes off. Shot clock 52.6 seconds to go. Up off the glass, good take. There by Mulligan. Howard dribbling around. Goes back for Loftus up off. No good, but she'll have a chance to shoot a couple free throws. Good cut there by Hawkins without the basketball. Coming off the bench, getting some minutes, going to the free throw line. for her on the bench, especially from Mosier and Jayla Williams. And, and Williams has been around for everything tonight. We saw her go through a limited warm up in street clothes, but been moving well. But the Hawk Cats will certainly like to have her back, help them accomplish their goals this season. 15 seconds to go in this one. Three point shot way off by Watier. Rebound up and a foul whistle on the Hawkettes. That will 
Ross and Salmon to the free throw line. First one rims out. Second one off as well. Rebound was chased down by Cobb. Howard with the basketball. Three seconds, two seconds, Howard not gonna shoot one. And Ankeny, the Hawkeyes. Not quite the way we expect to see them win by 21. Yeah, I mean, probably the best game that Ankeny's, sorry, Urbandale's played all year. They just, uh, that third and fourth quarter, they just couldn't handle the basketball as well as they did the first half. We'll be back in about 15 minutes with a boys game here tonight. Ankeny versus Urbandale. Back, like I said, about 15 minutes. That game will go at about 7.55, probably closer to 8 o'clock when that game will tip off. For Chris Morrow, I'm Andy Pollock. We'll see you here shortly. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here to show you amazing open houses we're hosting this weekend. Let's take a look. I've been working in Metro Real Estate for 20 years and with my team in Prairie Trail, we've been helping families find their perfect home in my hometown, Ankeny. We can't wait to see you this weekend at our open houses. Talk with you soon. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. What if you could create memories that would last a lifetime? That would be pretty cool. Well, now you can. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to dream homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at daniellecipher.com. Let's talk soon.
Katie Pollock. Hawkettes were victorious over Urbandale 50 to 29 as Chris Morrow and myself get ready to call this one. And honestly, Chris, one of the first things that strikes you as you come out is coming out of the starting lineups, the length of this Urbandale team. Yeah, they're very long. And I haven't been able to see them play this year, so I'm excited to see how they do this. Johnson is one of the players to watch tonight for the Hawks, and he's got the ball right now. Swings over, schooling. Rio Aguirre swings it across, and it's taken away. Herberdale in some zone defense, kind of messed with Ankeny on their first possession. Good pump fake there, get your, his defender to go up in the air and then knocks down the three. Urbandale back on the attack. Phillips. In the lane they go, Aguirre takes it away. That's Rio Aguirre. No pass, Schoolin up on blocked by Phillips and a foul. Schoolin will have a chance to shoot a couple free throws. Good patience there by Herbidale, run their set. Took a lot of time off the shot clock and got a good look. Two minutes into this one, Ankeny leads Herbidale four to two. Down the corner, Anderson for the basketball. Sends it back up top. Johnson, triple team. Gets this zone defense. Aguirre, nice cut in there to school and he lays it in. Good drive there by the baseline. Made the defense all shift to him and then a cut right down the middle for a layup. Flood, spin move into the lane, has to back it back out. Then Euchre, shot, no good. Leo Aguirre, high up in the air to get the rebound. Hawks trying to add to their lead here early on. Anderson. Now Urbandale appears to have switched to more of a man-to-man -man look. As Aguirre, back to his brother, Rio and Leo. Anderson in the lane. Shot, I think he might have got tipped out of his hand as he went up in the air. Phillips all the way down, taken away. Nice move by Johnson. Kicks out to Euchre though. Euchre gets it to fall. So what looked like a great play for the Hawks suddenly ended up in Euchre's hands and he drops a three-pointer through. flow to this one so far. Anderson down to the corner. Johnson all the way in, kicks it out. Schoolin, three point shot, a knuckleball, but it falls through. Mm -hmm. 
That's one thing it. that you have to do against the zone defense is be ready to shoot from the outside because it's going to be open. Well, he got the defense to rotate as he drove from one side of the court to the other and really opened up that three on the outside. Hawks looking to run. Aguirre down to the corner. Back up top, Johnson. Halfway through the first quarter. 9-5, Hawks in the lead. Good ball movement. Rio Aguirre for three. No good, a little strong. Schooling, though, the long rebound. Aguirre thought about taking a rebound shot. Might have still been thinking about it. Great move to his brother down low, up with the left hand. Aguirre can't quite finish. Gets the rebound, still can't finish. Flood clears it. What a great pass there. Just unlucky, didn't get the finish, but what a great look. It's almost as if the brothers were on the same page. Phillips, so comes back to the other end and hits a three, it's 9-8. We've only had a one stoppage of play through almost five minutes of this first quarter. Rio Aguirre, short, on the three. Flood with the rebound. Looking to push it the other way, into the lane. Spin move, fade away, kiss off the glass. What a great Four move there by Flood. Came to two steps, faded away from the contact for the bank. And just like that, Urbandale is taking a one point lead. Urbandale might have more players on the bench than any team I've seen this year. But Johnson loose in the corner and you cannot leave him that wide open because he will make you pay and he did there. Flood for three, good! Little game of horse is broken out. Anything you can do, I can do better there. Don't make me start singing. <laughs> Save your voice. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, we got a big week next week. Anderson, I'm not sure the Hawks have subbed even in the first quarter. Anderson for three, no good. Rebound to Phillips. Sure makes it easy on the play-by-play -play guy when they don't, when nobody subs. Did a one stoppage of play. It was right away at the beginning of the quarter. And there's a slap, nothing called, but Aguirre comes away with a steal. Anderson in the corner. What a pass down low and stolen away. The trail by Jackson Bethke. Actually, excuse me, that's not Bethke, that's Caden Burns. And a three-point shot for Flood is good. Blood is coming out, feeling it tonight. Eight points this first quarter. Johnson thought about three. Hands it off to Aguirre. You can tell the players have not been used to this much consistent play. Everything's slowing down a little bit right now. Aguirre nearly has it taken away. Johnson with a hand in his face, no good. Rebound to Euchre. Euchre, all the way down the floater, good. Boy, Urbandale, last couple offensive possessions been great for them. They lead 18-12. Yeah, they're just playing really well on offense, getting good looks and then rhythm. Anderson, that's a schooling down low. There's a good look for Aguirre, he can muscle his way through. And they say he was fouled by Jonathan Walker. And that'll give an opportunity for our first Heart of Ankeny Animal Hospital substitutions in this boys game. In for Urbandale is Thomas Salmon, as well as, I believe that's Davis Harderson. It is in the game. Gunner Breeding comes into the game, a senior for Ankeny. As Johnson, sick move. Just that quick crossover with that first step is just filthy right there. Urbandale will hold for one. Flood. Nine seconds. Flood draws the double team. Step back, long three on the way, no good. Rebound out of there to Dalton. And no shot will be taken, so we go to the end of the first quarter. Urbandale leading Ankeny 
1814. Coach, I move the camera right now over to the Ankeny student section. That is not the Urbandale section. That is the Ankeny student section. Clad in blue tonight. You're in blue. Everybody uh, paying their respects to the tragedy that took place in Perry yesterday, just up the road. And I know you've got close ties to that community. Yeah, it's just a really sad thing. And, you know, I was able to be the head girls coach there at Perry for one year and a behavior interventionist. And it hit me a little bit. It's hit a lot of people around here. You think it happens, but you don't think it's ever going to happen this close to home. And no one's prepared for it. Um, prayers for that community, all the teachers, the students, the parents. I can't even imagine what they're going through. And, you know, Dan Marburger, the principal there, is a hero. I, I was told that he, he took some bullets for some kids and saved a lot of other kids' lives. But I just want to send out prayers for that whole community and very close-knit to me as, like I said, I was able to get my head first girls head coaching job there. So please keep them in your thoughts and prayers and continue to wear blue and support that community. Certainly a lot of support, not only around central Iowa, but the whole state of Iowa and also the Midwest for the citizens of Perry, the students of Perry. Like you mentioned, Principal Dan Marburger, a guy that was a college athlete, played football at Central back in the day, and by all accounts, a true hero in this tragedy. Back to action here as Carson Johnson can't get that to fall. Aguirre up tall, battles his way through. And, you know, we've seen Leo Aguirre complete that play a lot. He hasn't done it yet tonight, but I got a feeling we're gonna see more of that around the basket. Yeah, he's just very strong, goes, gets those boards and fights through contact, continues working. And sooner or later, he's gonna get that ball to fall for him. 18-14, Urbandale still in the lead. Three-point shot on the way, Euchre. I thought he was gonna bank it in for a sec from my angle. But the rebound ripped out of there. Phillips up top. Into the lane, no good. Carson Johnson up high for the rebound. Johnson, the killer crossover up with a shot. Good! What a move by Carson Johnson! Man, what a move there to get by the defender. And then he saw the contact coming from the weak side. Knew he was going to get hit hard and hung up there and finished for an and one. Right, not even the move here at the top of the key, but the finish, the strength to go through that. And that's something, watch Carson Johnson here since he was a freshman playing varsity. Obviously didn't have the strength when he was just a little freshman. One may say a scrawny freshman, even when he was playing, but he has filled out and a great college prospect. And Carson Johnson has certainly been a pleasure to watch develop in his basketball skills. Nearly his takeaway for Anderson, three-point shot. Harderson, no good. Up high, Johnson gets the rebound. Ankeny looking to tie or take the lead. Anderson to Aguirre, cutting through the lane, up with a shot, no good. Just hasn't quite been able to finish tonight. Yeah, it looked like the ball might have slipped out of his hands there before he went up. Phillips a little slow getting back. Euchre fade away in the lane, no good. Nice box out by Rio Aguirre. Rio for three, good. It's a wide open three. No one stepped up there on the switch or in the screen. Got to communicate there. He kind of nonchalantly came around the screen and just immediately elevated, took that shot. And a bold Urbandale into a false sense of security. Harderson can't get that to fall, but he'll have a chance. No, they say no shot. On the floor. Keen Riley checks in the game in another heart of Ankeny Animal Hospital substitution. Riley will trigger. Into Euchre. Now Phillips. Three point shot on the way. No good. Long rebound out there. Great ox out by Aguirre. Johnson down in the corner. Schooling. No good. Nothing there. Johnson again at the hoop. Not only has he been able to shoot from the outside, but he's been able to finish at the hoop. 
Yeah, see, that first step is just so quick to get by the defender. He's kind of taken over this quarter. Timeout, Urbandale. We'll take one as well and be back right after this. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. So after Ankeny goes on a 7-0 run, Urbandale with a timeout. Let's see what they start off running here. Out of the break. Looks like they're going to spread things out a little bit. Phillips. Thomas Salmon came off the bench. Phillips has it nearly taken away. Great look then down low to Riley, but it's blocked out of there, and it's going to go back to Urbandale. No, it does not. It goes to Ankeny. Johnson really doing it on both ends, defense and offense right now. Schooling with the basketball. Off to Johnson. Johnson, floater in the lane. The old Curtis Stinson shot right there as coming away the rebound is Phil Phillips. Phillips hands off Harderson, powers his way into the lane and travels with the basketball. 4.49 to go in the second quarter. Ankeny leads Urbandale 21-18. Several different guys for this Ankeny team can handle the basketball. Carson Johnson with it right now. Urbandale trying to get him to dribble into a trap. Back out to Schoolin, kicks it out to Aguirre. Aguirre trying to get it to his brother down low, taken away. Urbandale, a little fancy dribbling. All the way out there to Harderson. Harderson loses it momentarily, tipped away. Euchre off the screen. Tries to go back door, nothing there. Salmon can't handle it. Turnover back to Ankeny. At some point during that exchange, you'd like to see someone from Urbandale just power dribble that and take it to the hoop. Yeah, he had the advantage there. He was looking to pass instead of looking to downhill first. Johnson to Anderson. Quickly over there to cover Anderson. Aguirre swings it all the way around to his brother. Johnson for three, no good. He's not going to miss many that are that open. Harderson for three. Good. Good shot there off the screen. Pretty deep, too. Ties it up at 21. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Johnson to Anderson and Aguirre. Rio for three, no good. Rebound out of there to Urbandale. Euchre has it taken away by Aguirre. Aguirre all the way in and Aguirre charges. He is not gonna get agreed with by many of the Ankeny fans on that. Those are one of those calls that could go either way. Almost a situation, just let that go. There wasn't a whole lot of contact between the two. First foul on Aguirre, a third team foul here in the second quarter on Ankeny. Flood back in the game. An opportunity to floater from 15 feet. Nice touch by Calvin Flood. Flood having a really good first half for Urbandale right now. He 
He's really running things very well from that point guard position that time. Left open, able to knock it through. Rio off to Leo for the wide open layup. Good ball movement there by Ankeny to get the, the defense sh shifted for a bucket. Fade away in and out there for Jonathan Walker. Nolan Dalton gets the rebound for Ankeny and into the lane. Up the shot. Who else? Carson Johnson into double digits on the night. Again, Ooh. boy's feeling it. He's definitely He's feeling it digits. smooth. Minute 50 to go, all tied up. Great basketball game here so far. Dalton. Aguirre to Aguirre. Oh, nice look from Leo Aguirre to Nolan Dalton to give the Hawks a two point lead. Great look there, good communication on the cut. Let him know he's wide open. Flood feeling it, good! Having a game. Points. And he gets a steal. The run out, Harderson all the way in for the layup, good! And Urbandale has taken a three point lead with just over a minute to go in the first half. Flood playing inspired basketball tonight. He's got 15. And take it away. And on the rebound, Keen Riley might have hit the ground with a little bit harder than what the contact had. But when you're up in the air, it doesn't take much to knock you flat. No. Good pump fake there to get him up in the air. So a flurry of activity by Urbandale here in the waning moments of the first half. A lot of that due to the play of senior guard Calvin Flood. Creating turnovers on the defensive end, some sweet shots on the offensive end. Fun player to watch. That battle between him and Carson Johnson in the second half will be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, I'm really impressed with Cameron Flood. And it's not just off the offensive end. He's playing great defense, getting touches. Playing inspired basketball. Anderson. Dalton. Ooh, he might have traveled with it. Three-point shot on the way. Nice look there for Gunner Breeding. But Urbandale will have an opportunity to add to their lead with a shot clock off and 22 seconds to go in this first half. This is Flood, he's had the hot hand in the first half. Wearing one pink shoe and one green shoe. Flood all the way in, and he'll have a chance for, oh, he traveled. Thought they called a foul, he traveled. With 4.4 seconds to go. You're not gonna miss that pink and green shoe. Johnson, look out, the floater. No good at the horn. We'll be back with our halftime show brought to you by the Josh Coward offices of New York Life right after this on the Ankeny Activities Network built by the Danielle Seifert real estate team. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here to show you amazing open houses we're hosting this weekend. Let's take a look. I've been working in Metro real estate for 20 years, and with my team in Prairie Trail, we've been helping families find their perfect home in my hometown, Ankeny. We can't wait to see you this weekend at our open houses. Talk with you soon. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. 
So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. What if you could create memories that would last a lifetime? That would be pretty cool. Well, now you can. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to dream homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at daniellecypher.com. Let's talk soon. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. Welcome back to the Halftime Show, brought to you by the Josh Coward offices of New York Life in the district at Prairie Trail. Just down the street here from Ankeny High School, Andy Pollack. With Chris Morrow and Chris at Halftime, Ankeny leading, no excuse me, Urbandale leading Ankeny 32-27. to A uh, game that it looked like for a second Ankeny was going to be able to start to play their game and then they went cold shooting. Calvin Flood for Urbandale has had himself quite the first half. Yeah, and that's a story that first half. Is just, he's just coming out, playing really good on offense, really good rhythm, getting good shots. But then he's taking that energy and getting stops on the defense with deflections, causing turnovers. He's just playing really good basketball. And then for Ankeny, it's just the Carson Johnson show right now. And you know that defense by the Jayhawks right now, it's kind of a 2-1-2 zone look is kind of throwing Ankeny for a loop. We've seen Leo Aguirre have a lot of opportunities, just not able to capitalize. He's creating a lot of those opportunities by what he does on the offensive glass. You feel like a guy like him converts some of those opportunities. This is a completely different second half. Yeah, he's just getting all uh, looks down low and he's just fighting to get those boards. Just weren't able to get him to drop. I'm sure they will this second half. Just uh, keep playing, keep the confidence. And you know Carson Johnson's a player, so we may have a good one this second half. All right, we're gonna take a quick break again, be back with the rest of our Josh Coward halftime show right after this on the Ankeny Activities Network, built by the Danielle Seifert real estate team. 
Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to dream homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at DanielleSeifert.com. Let's talk soon. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. What if you could create memories that would last a lifetime? That would be pretty cool. Well, now you can. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to dream homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at DanielleSeifert.com. Let's talk soon. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching, we have the best technology, we have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here to show you amazing open houses we're hosting this weekend. Let's take a look. I've been working in Metro real estate for 20 years and with my team in Prairie Trail, we've been helping families find their perfect home in my hometown, Ankeny. We can't wait to see this weekend at our open houses. Talk with you soon. Yeah, it'd be nice to have that length on, against the zone. Just to get some more looks on the inside. And I'm sure Coach Carlson drew something at halftime to beat this 2-1-2 two -two zone defense the second half. Walker, Flood, Phillips, Caden uh, Burns. Keep thinking that's Jackson Bethke, it's not. And Grant Euchre on the floor. They go to Phillips right away and get a backdoor layup for Burns. That little set play you were talking about to start the half. 
see what sort of adjustments the Hawks have made. Anderson, high pass to Johnson. Rio Aguirre baseline, kicks off to Leo. Leo gets one to fall. Welcome Good Cyclops. brother to brothers. Yeah. Calvin Flood, who had the hot hand in the first half. Hands off to Euchre. Euchre, quick one off the glass. Aguirre altered his shot, and then Aguirre gets fouled by Burns. Wrong spot at the wrong time for Burns. <laughs> Anderson, Johnson, Anderson, nice defense over there by Burns. Been impressed with these Jayhawks tonight. Rio Aguirre for three, strong. The pie to get the rebound is Burns. Flood clears it. Hawks are back quickly on defense. Euchre for three, no good. Ball tipped around and Aguirre comes away with it. Quick possession. Anderson three, in and out, no good. Tipped out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Hawks. One thing Coach Carlson is saying right now is push, push. That's one way that you can beat this zone is beat them up the court so they can't set up. Opportunity, if not that initial break. Get him out of their positions for that secondary break, and now Johnson is followed by Flood. I think we've had more fouls to start this third quarter, the first 92 seconds of the third quarter than we had the entire first half. Johnson, he'll shoot it from there. He does, and hits. Got to put a hand up uh, at least, because he will hit that on you. Back to a two-point lead. Flood tipped away. The Hawks bench is getting into it. And Aguirre comes away with the rebound. Hawks looking to tie or possibly take the lead. Carson Johnson up with the left hand. What a move. He's so good at playing through contact and finishing. I feel like I catch myself over and over again saying, what a move by Carson Johnson. But really, what else can you say? Yeah, you really can't. It's just impressive. He knows how to play with his height. He's strong, hangs up in the air to give him more time to finish. Johnson gives the Hawks the lead for the first time in quite a while. Now with 5.44 to go in the third quarter. Phillips all the way an easy one for Lynn. We'd like to see that from Phillips a little bit more. He can do that. He's strong, quick for a big guy. Anderson for three, no good. Phillips up high to get the rebound. is off, Burns taken away. Aguirre, it was two on three, he wisely pulled it out. Leo Aguirre, he'll shoot that. Throws it up off the glass through contact, no good. Phillips has a tip from behind. Aguirre, wide open, look out as he lays it in. Those are one of those that you do not want to go up and miss a dunk, especially when you're down. Back to a one point lead for the Hawks. Euchre for three. Johnson charges. Carson could sense that right there. Got caught up in the air. Tried to hold back, but 
Good defensive play there. Urbandale trying to add to their two point lead. And we've got a foul on Thomas Salmon. I don't know, it was on the screen. I'm not sure if he was moving or if he reached out and grabbed. There's no indication, but away from the basketball. Yeah, I think he's tucked his leg out a little bit too much on the screen. Back to this 2-1-2 defense. There's a spot that's gonna be open on the rotation. Johnson, a little step back, no good. Brevin Phillips with the rebound. Flood down low to Salmon. Aguirre nearly baited him and then there's gonna be a foul call. Whistled for that foul. Second on Ankeny of this quarter. Of course, the new rules this year in high school basketball. And then quickly off the inbounds, Euchre takes it back to a four point lead for the Jayhawks. Ankeny's had some long scoreless stretches. Aguirre going to try to stop that. He's fouled. He'll have three shots. Yeah, that's one big no-no is do not foul a three-point shooter by not closing out. And that's what he did. He jumped instead of closed out. So Aguirre, our second time tonight, we've seen three free throws being shot. He misses the first one. steps back and hits a second. That's one thing you do when you miss a free throw is take yourself off the line and refocus. So Rio Aguirre goes two for three. We've got a timeout and it is a full timeout taken by Ankeny. We'll be back right after this. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here to show you amazing open houses we're hosting this weekend. Let's take a look. I've been working in Metro Real Estate for 20 years and with my team in Prairie Trail, we've been helping families find their perfect home in my hometown, Ankeny. We can't wait to see this weekend at our open houses. Talk with you soon. So when an athlete walks into Nick Karash Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching, we have the best technology, we have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. Three twenty-seven to go in the third quarter. Andy Pollock, Chris Morrow here with you tonight on the south side of Ankeny. As Urbandale trying to pull an upset on the Ankeny Hawks. They lead right now by two, but fouls are starting to mount up for the visitors. Urbandale here in their dark blue road uniforms, trimmed in red. They have not gone very deep in the bench since that first quarter. Brevin Phillips kicks it back out. Flood from a long ways out. Can't hit it. And Rio Aguirre clears the rebound. Reading. Aguirre slips to the left hand and puts it up and in. Phillips, you mentioned you'd like to see him drive more. He gives it off, dishes it. Euchre can't finish. Fox with a three on two. Make it four on two as Aguirre hustles down. Johnson swings it out. Rio for three. Good! 
Big shot by Rio Aguirre. Two big offensive possessions for Rio. Aguirre into double digits. He's got 13. Three point shot for Euchre. High arcing, no good. Breeding. Tips the rebound. It's going to go off of Urbandale. There's a long pause there. <laughs> I think everyone was waiting to see what he was going to call. No one really knew. So now Ankeny, for one of the first times in a while, they've got a lead that they can play with. Anderson dribbles all the way in. Johnson for three. Go. Carson Johnson knocks it down. Ankeny forces Urbandale into a timeout. We'll be back in a minute. What if you could create memories that would last a lifetime? That would be pretty cool. Well, now you can. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to dream homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at daniellecypher.com. Let's talk soon. Forty-seven, forty-one. Ankeny in the lead after a nice little run coming out of that at last time out. Chris Morrow, they did it a couple different ways, but it started with penetration. That created a lot of different opportunities for a lot of different guys. Yeah, when you penetrate, you make everyone commit to you. You see that dish, and they're just getting rhythm shots, and then they're not closing out on the shooters, which makes it easy for them to knock down that outside shot. Brevin Phillips fade away, 16 footer away short. Burns comes out of there with a the rebound. Now Flood, who's been quiet in the second half. No longer. He's just really smooth tonight. Kind of doing whatever he wants. He's got 17. Great pass to Aguirre. Gives the old YMCA pump fake and just waits to put in the layup. Great presence there to know that he's going to go up to try to block that shot. What's Brant Carlson asking his team to play some defense, but Phillips gets to the hoop. Hawks by four. Anderson. Now way down to the corner, Johnson. Woo! 23 points for Carson Johnson. And that time they did close out with a hand in his face and he still knocked it down. But what do you do? Urbandale looking to hold for one. Flood was closely guarded. He still got the basketball now. Being covered by Johnson. Flood steps through, can't get the reverse layup. Ankeny with a chance here at the end of the quarter. Aguirre all the way in his trips. Falls into a bevy of photographers down there underneath the basket. And Leo Aguirre will have a chance to add a couple more free throws and extend this Hawk lead. Did a good job of driving it into contact. Yeah, he definitely got the contact. Not sure what the Urban L player was asking for, but Definitely made contact there. Aguirre up to 14 points, make it 15. <laughs> At the horn, Burns can't get it to fall. 
We'll be back right after this. Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here to show you amazing open houses we're hosting this weekend. Let's take a look. I've been working in Metro real estate for 20 years and with my team in Prairie Trail, we've been helping families find their perfect home in my hometown, Ankeny. We can't wait to see you this weekend at our open houses. Talk with you soon. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. Start of the fourth quarter here with Ankeny up by nine, 54, 45. The Hawks are in white. Johnson drives in, kicks out to Aguirre. Aguirre, who's had a great game tonight. Great look for Johnson. Anderson up high for the rebound. Back to Aguirre driving in off strong, but Leo is there. Big brother's only there to help out. Yeah, great ball movement there, just sharing the basketball for Ankeny, and they're just playing really hard right now. 7.15 to go in this one. Three-pointer from the corner is blocked by Anderson. And one of the many guys that can handle the ball for Coach Brant Carlson's squad, Rio Aguirre, will take it up the floor. Johnson, look out. Rio to Leo in the lane. Kind of has a little Dennis Rodman to him. Yeah, he just outworks people on the boards. He is going to go get it no matter who's in his way. Flood stuck in a bad position. Hawks thought they might have tipped it off a flood, but it will remain with the Jayhawks. Phillips. Traveled with the basketball. No, he was not, and it was held. Really like to see Phillips post up and make a strong move at the hoop. I feel like he can do it. He's just not wanting to right at this point. Aguirre nearly gets a steal. Phillips for three. Anderson wanted to throw deep, he does, to his tight end Aguirre that it was during the football season. Leo Aguirre all the way in off the glass. Great take by Leo. Timeout, Urban Day. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level.
Hi everybody, Danielle Seifert here, letting you know that I have the keys to your brand new home. I have been handing over keys to dream homes in the Des Moines Metro for 20 years. And with my team in Ankeny, we deliver an experience that's simple and stress-free. Sound advice, savvy negotiating, exceptional customer service, and the keys to living your best life are just the start of what you get when you are working with me and my team. Check out available properties at daniellecipher.com. Let's talk soon. Out of the timeout, Urbandale with Calvin Flood, the fadeaway. In and out, no good. He's having a tough time finding the range in the second half. After an incredible first half. Yeah, he's just being more pressured this second half. He's contested more. They're making him work for every look. Too early if you're Ankeny to start using more of that shot clock? Yeah, they're in a rhythm right now. I would keep going with what's working. There it is, Leo Aguirre underneath. He's got 14. There, Flood finds his spot high off the glass. Now Coach Carlson is saying move the basketball. Looking like he wants to use some shot clock now. There's good movement. Maybe one extra pass. Urbanale with a steal. Stolen away. Johnson, the hesitation, which leads to the reverse layup. Urbanale needs another timeout. What if you could create memories that would last a lifetime? That would be pretty cool. Well, now you can. Ankeny continues to extend their lead. 64-47 with 4.24 to go here in the fourth quarter. Andy Pollock, Chris Morrow, just a little extra pep in the step of the Hawks as this game goes on. Yeah, they're just really fun to watch right now. They're just playing with really good rhythm. They're kind of getting whatever they want. And then, you know, Carson Johnson, I can say it over and over and over again. He's unbelievably good. He's got 25 points tonight. Three-point shot, nice shot there from Jonathan Walker. Urbandale gonna show off a little press. Gonna move this tempo up a little bit. Coach Carlson wants his guys to spread out a little bit, just for that reason, as Carson Johnson takes it in and lays it in. Yeah, I really think they can go five out right now, and I don't know who could stop Carson Johnson right now. Well, and with the three-point shooters they have on the floor, you can't leave those shooters. This little ball movement there allows Caden Burns to put it in. Under three and a half to play. Gere gets it taken away. Wide open down low, Burns can't get it to fall though. Not exactly what you want to see out of your defense. No, just a bad possession that last time by Ankeny. Make that extra pass right now. But now under three minutes to play. Urbandale gonna have to make a move soon if they're gonna make one. Johnson way down in the corner to Aguirre, short. Run out opportunity for the Jayhawks. Burns up off the glass, no good. Might have been blocked a little bit by Schoolin. Seems like basically whatever Ankeny does on a possession, that's what Urbandale does right now. And with Ankeny leading by 14, I'm guessing Brant Carlson's just fine with that. Absolutely, let that clock run now. Get a good look, don't force anything. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Don't foul now if you're Urbandale. 
Johnson, they spread things out. He goes all the way in, he charges. Oh, oh no, not a charge call. And Johnson hit the ground hard. Both guys hit hard. Johnson holds onto his head. Trying to help him up, he is up. Initially, the official went to put his hand behind his head and then changed it into a blocking call. Yeah, he definitely, his head hit hard off the ground there. You hate to see that, especially with his concussions these days. Glad to see that he's up, hopefully he's okay. Does so he get the trainer out there to wipe up any wet spots, which by this point in the night, is probably pretty moist out there. I'm kind of surprised here, Andy, that the refs are not making him get checked out with that new concussion rule. They appear to be chatting and chuckling a little bit. Seems like he's okay. Maybe Carson Johnson should have to shoot with his eyes closed to make it fair. I'm guessing he could probably make it as many times as that guy, that kid's in the gym, shooting those shots. Just so smooth. 29 points for senior Carson Johnson. Hawks by 16. Leo Aguirre tipped it away. And I didn't want to see Johnson dive after that one. And there he gets a foul with a hand check. As much as you want to see Johnson diving all over the floor, up by 16, under two minutes to play, choose your moments. Yes, absolutely. Urbandale has struggled to put points on the board in the second half. Johnson nearly gets a takeaway. And then a jump ball between Phillips and Aguirre will give the ball back to Urbandale. 33 seconds on the shot clock. Probably won't come into play a whole lot with Urbandale having the basketball right now. As I say that, long three on the way, no good by Flood. Doesn't look like Urbandale will foul. Schooling has it tipped away, nearly taken away. Oh, great hustle down there. That was definitely caused by Keen Riley, a junior. Great hustle there. Dive on the floor, save the ball. Down big. They could have well gave up on that, but he didn't. Leo Aguirre getting counted out there, and he's fouled. Not sure that's exactly what they want to do. They, they won't be able to get him to the free throw line for a while anyway. There's only the second team foul of this quarter. That's one of the negatives of the new rule. Yeah, I'm guessing that coach for Urbandale is just wanting to play solid defense here, get a stop. Johnson, 31 for Johnson. Flood the floater. Good. Cameron Flood is playing really well for the Jayhawks. Urbandale trying to make it closer here at the end. 12 point game, 25 seconds to go. Ankeny gonna come away with a win. Improved to seven and two on the year. Urbandale will drop to three and seven. And the Hawks will play next Tuesday. Home game then. We'll have that right here on the Ankeny Activities Network. Coach Morrow, some of your closing thoughts for tonight. Yeah, great game for Ankeny. The second half, they came out and just played with momentum, shared the basketball. Got whatever they really wanted in the second half. And then for the Jayhawks, they had a great first half. And props to Cameron Flood for a big game for them. But story of this game is Carson Johnson. He averages a little over 24 points per game, and he's at 31 tonight and just took over the second half. 
I want to thank everybody for listening here tonight. And, of course, our great sponsors in the business community here in Ankeny for making this all possible. We'll be back with a busy week next week on the Ankeny Activities Network built by the Danielle Seifert Real Estate Team. You'll hear a lot of us on the air <laughs> next week. Looking forward to it. be a great week. Big week for Hawk Athletics. For, for Chris Marr tonight, Andy Pollack here. Have a good weekend. Hi, everybody. Danielle Seifert here to show you amazing open houses we're hosting this weekend. Let's take a look. I've been working in Metro Real Estate for 20 years, and with my team in Prairie Trail, we've been helping families find their perfect home in my hometown, Ankeny. We can't wait to see you this weekend at our open houses. Talk with you soon.